Just a quick reminder before we get into the lesson to download the hands-on lab exercises that accompany this complete CCNA course. I'll include the link in the description. Also remember to subscribe and hit the notifications bell so you don't miss any of the lessons in the course. Okay, let's get into it. In this lecture, you're going to learn about static routing. You saw in the last lecture that when you add an IP address to a router's interface, it automatically adds a connected route to its routing table and it's able to route traffic between its different connected interfaces. But if a router wants to send traffic to a subnet that it's not directly connected to, then it's going to need some way to know how to get there. So you need to get that route into the routing table. You can either do it manually as an administrator by adding a static route, or the router can learn it dynamically through a routing protocol. In this lecture, we're going to cover how to add it with a static route. If you see the example here down at the bottom, I've got R1, which is directly connected to the 10.0.0, the 10.0.1, and the 10.0.2 networks. So it can route traffic directly there just by configuring the IP addresses. But there's another network of 10.1.0, which is behind the router R2. So right now, R1 doesn't know how to get there. I'm going to need to add a route to tell it how to get there. And R2 is directly connected to 10.1.0 and 10.0.0. So it can tra send traffic to them directly as soon as I've configured the IP addresses. It's going to need routes to 10.0.1 and 10.0.2 behind router R1. So the command to add a static route is IP route. Let's look at R1's route to get to the 10.1.0 network first. So the command that I need to add is IP route 10.1.0.0 so the subnet I need to get to, including its subnet mask. Then I say the next hop IP address that I need to send traffic to in order to get there. So for R1 to send traffic to the 10.1.0 network, it needs to send it out of its fast 0 slash 0 interface and send it to 10.0.0.2 on router R2. So I add the route for that. And it should be obvious how I do the routes on R2 now. It's going to need two routes, a route to 10.0.1 and a route to 10.0.2. So the commands are IP route 10.0.1.0, 255.255.255.0, going to the next hop 10.0.0.1 on R1. And IP route 10.0.2.0, 255.255.255.0. The next hop is the same again. It's still the 10.0.0.1 interface on router R1. Once you've done that, you'll be able to route traffic between all of the networks in the network there. Okay, let's take it up a notch and add another router. So it's the same topology as before, but I've added an additional router, which is R3. So R3 has got routes to 10.1.1 and the 10.1.0 network because it's directly connected to them. But right now it doesn't know how to get to 10.0.0 behind R2 and 10.0.1 and 10.0.2, which are behind R1. So I'm going to need to add routes to those networks. So first up, the route to get to 10.0.0 behind R2. The command would be IP route 10.0.0.0. 255.255.255.0 and the next hop is 10.1.0.2 which is on router R2. Then the commands to get to the routes behind router R1 would be IP route 10.0.1.0, 255.255.255.0 and the next hop address is 10.1.0.2. Okay, so those routes are behind R1, but I don't point the route at R1 because R3 is not directly connected to it. When I add the target for the route, it has to be reachable on a directly connected interface. So R3, to get to R1, it sends the traffic via R2, which it is directly connected to. 
So the target for the IP route 10.0.1 is 10.1.0.2, the same address again on R2. And to get to 10.0.2, it's going to be the same again. IP route 10.0.2.0, 255.255.255.0. Next hop is again 10.1.0.2 on R2. Okay, the route on R2. It needs a route to get to 10.1.1 behind R3. So the command is IP route. 10.1.1.0, and the next hop is 10.1.0.1. That is out the interface that is directly connected to R3. And then to get to the two routes behind R1, I've got IP route for 10.0.1.0 and 10.0.2.0. They're both a slash 24, so 255.255.255.0. And the next hop for both of them is the directly reachable link to R1, which is 10.0.0.1. And finally, we need to do routes on R1 to get to 10.1.1 and 10.1.0. They are both reachable via R2 at 10.0.0.2. Okay, once we've configured all of these routes, we're going to have reachability between all of the different subnets on our network there. Next up, we'll do the usual. We're going to configure this in the lab. I'll see you in the next lecture for that. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to get the complete course ad free right now, then you can enroll in my CCNA Gold Bootcamp by clicking the link above my head or in the description. It also includes full study notes, quizzes, and 150 pages of additional troubleshooting labs you can't find anywhere else.